Okay, today we're going to be talking about Parkinson's disease and we're going to be talking about dopamine and how dopamine can alleviate symptoms in Parkinson's but also how dopamine itself can be the major problem in the progression of Parkinson's and what we can do about it using methylation and functional medicine. So one of the big ideas with Parkinson's disease is that it has to do with neurons that are located in the midbrain. And these neurons happen to look dark. They're, they're named the sub substantia nigra, which basically means black substance. These neurons that are black are the neurons that are slowly destroyed over time that eventually give rise to the disease that we call Parkinson's. About 60% of all these neurons have to be destroyed before symptoms of Parkinson's disease show up and a diagnosis uh, is forthcoming. So a lot of destruction has to happen in this area before someone gets their diagnosis. But what we know from the research is that dopamine itself is the problem not because dopamine isn't necessary but because dopamine is very volatile and can be metabolized down certain pathways inside the cell that create a lot of inflammation so dopamine is important for the neuron to work normally for the brain to function but it's also if it's not handled correctly by the body or if the environment inside the brain changes to a toxic situation dopamine will be the source of the problem. And the research says here that dopamine and its metabolites that have hydroxy or hydroxyl residues can cause cell damage in these cells. So they're saying that dopamine itself is the source of the damage. The way that works is that dopamine is metabolized by enzymes that are located in the mitochondria and we'll get into that a little bit later but the dopamine itself is broken down by enzymes located in the mitochondria and the mitochondria are the lungs of the cell they are the energy producing part of the cell as well so this is how cells breathe and it's how they produce their energy so anything that injures the mitochondria will inhibit the cells ability to function if enough of the mitochondria are injured the cell will die. This is what the research shows is happening in Parkinson's. It's not limited to Parkinson's. Many other degenerative conditions also have mitochondrial dysfunction, but especially in Parkinson's, that is an area that is very um, susceptible to damage and is part of the process of, of degeneration. And the research here is saying the same thing, that chief among the causes for Parkinson's is dysfunction of the mitochondria and production of too many in, um, inflammatory molecules. So we know that pesticide exposure is related to Parkinson's and this really has to do with toxins that are sprayed in the plants get into the air, water, and soil and in susceptible people these toxins are going to cause inflammation in the brain this inflammation is going to promote dopamine doing the wrong thing and creating damage rather than working normally and allowing the brain to function in a normal fashion. And the research again is saying that pesticide exposure does increase the risk of developing Parkinson's. Another research study shows that if someone was applying pesticides like the people in this photo and they happen to be using two different kinds of common pesticides, the odds that they would get Parkinson's would go up about 400%. So the increases that are seen in the literature um, connecting Parkinson's disease and pesticides, those are not small increases. A 400% increase is a very significant rise. So these toxins that are being sprayed on plants, they are getting into the brain of humans and in certain people speeding up neurodegeneration causing Parkinson's and Parkinson's like symptoms. So now we're going to look quickly at the biochemistry 
what we're looking at this page is you're seeing L-tyrosine, which is the precursor to dopamine. But it first turns into L-dopa from one chemical reaction. The next chemical reaction brings it all the way over to dopamine. Now, L-dopa might be familiar to you because it is used in pharmaceutical treatment of Parkinson's disease, but it is widely known in the research that L-dopa, while it does alleviate symptoms, creates its own major set of problems, including um, increasing the rate of destruction of the neurons that ultimately we're trying to save. So why does that happen? As I said before, dopamine is necessary for function, but it's also part of the problem. And, and where that begins to be true is right here in this pathway that you're looking at. This is a study from 2010 showing how L-dopa and dopamine, instead of going from left to right across the top in this normal pathway, can get pushed down this pathway showing from top to bottom with these double arrows. And what you're seeing is that dopamine is basically rusting. It's oxidizing. Like um, you cut an apple, you leave it on your counter, you come back four or five hours later, and the apple, the air, part of it that has ex been exposed to the air has turned brown. And what you're seeing on the apple's surface is that the tissue of the apple is oxidizing. Well, the same thing can happen inside of our cells at a molecular level. And dopamine and L-dopa are very sensitive to being oxidized if there's not enough antioxidants in the brain. So if there's toxins present shown by these green arrows from pesticides in the air, water, soil, other uh, chemicals that we've been exposed to, which we all have been, dopamine has a tendency to get pushed into this pathway where quinones are formed. Quinones are very destructive and they are thought to play a role in the degeneration of the substantia nigra and the dopamine neurons that are located there. So what we're looking at here is that dopamine getting pushed down a pathway that creates a lot of inflammation. It creates a type of molecule called a quinone that is capable of breaking DNA and killing the cell. So you're looking here at superoxide desmutase, you're looking at some other, you're looking at hydrogen peroxide, you're looking at inflammation. That's what this chart is showing you. And when the body is exposed to toxins, dopamine and L-dopa will go in the wrong direction quicker. They will rust and break down quicker and cause a lot of problems inside the brain. So detoxification is a big, big player here. Now we're looking at dopamine. So if I was to jump back a slide, this, let's say that it started, this molecule started as L-tyrosine, it went into L-dopa, it went into dopamine, it didn't get pushed down this pathway. Well, then what's going to happen next? Well, if the molecule happens to make it to this point of view, this point um, as dopamine, it then has uh, quite a bit of work it has to do to become the ultimate end product of this process, which is homovalinic acid, HVA, shown here at the bottom. So Dopamine has several steps it has to go through in order to leave your body. And many of these steps are methylation dependent. So you're looking at the COMT gene, which is a methylation dependent process, methylation dependent enzyme. And what's going to happen is, is if this that I've circled in red is slowed down, then dopamine will be imbalanced. It will not go equally left and right. It will be pushed down the right side, and there's consequences of that. So, again, here's another example of dopamine, a necessary part of our brain, being the problem because it's not going in the right place. What the research says is that excess, excess oxidizing species, excess inflammation in the central nervous system, in the brain, leads to permanent damage through the death of neurons and glia. So it's going to be killing cells. Toxins in our environment and low antioxidants will kill cells inside of our brain. This will cause a change in monoamine oxidase function. And we're going to get into that shortly. 
which is known to sh play a major role in neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's and dementia. So now we're looking at the same chart, only I've redrawn it with my own notes. And I call this the normal pathway, meaning this is where dopamine should be going. Um, this is the protective pathway where there's less inflammation being made. Ultimately, our target is down here, HBA. But what we know about methylation and what we know about polymorphisms in general is that MAOB happens to be upregulated in the central nervous system. As we age, it goes faster. Many people have certain genes that cause it to go faster as well. So when we see MAOB going faster combined with a slow methylation issue, then absolutely dopamine is going to get pushed to the left. It's going to go down this left side. Some dopamine will end up as dopal, but because it's slowed COMTs down here, these will build up to too toxic of a level and that can create a problem itself. So again, slow methylation makes an issue here. As dopamine is metabolized, it gets stuck halfway between where it's trying to go and where it needs to go. That's a problem and that can hurt the brain and kill neurons. Now, as dopamine is broken down, ammonia and nitrogen is removed from that, creating new molecules called methylamine. Methylamine is now going to be processed through another enzyme to create more hydrogen peroxide, formaldehyde, and ammonia. So you can see here that because of the imbalance in the enzymes, dopamine itself becomes a problem. This is where, I, this is how dopamine is killing neurons. Dopamine, something we need, something we have to have to be healthy and have a um, functioning nervous system is susceptible to turning into things that are very damaging to the brain like ammonia, formaldehyde, and H2O2 because of the imbalances in the enzymes that break it down. And what the research says is we need more antioxidants in the brain. If you give the brain antioxidants like glutathione and superoxide dismutase, it will protect itself from these molecules right here. Okay, But we also have to address methylation and we have to address the MAOB the dysfunction. Luckily for us, Mother Nature has given us many tools and we can use meth methylation support to balance out the COMT enzyme. We can also use St. John's wort and as a MAO inhibitor which will slow down dopamine from breaking apart into this toxic form of molecules you see on the left. So in this way Dopamine can be seen as both the necessary part of our brain, but also the damaging molecule that it can be. And as we've shown here, dopamine is susceptible to auto-oxidation, forming quinones. This is very, very problematic. Antioxidants will protect the brain from this happening and detoxing the brain of petrochemicals and other damaging substances will also protect this from happening. When we look at this pathway we realize that dopamine has a long way to go to get out of our body and there's many opportunities for enzymes to be imbalanced especially the methylation enzymes. Finally we talked about how slow methylation combined with increased monoamine oxidase activity creates a very negative imbalance with dopamine. These people will have low dopamine levels, they're going to be angry and have other um, personality symptoms, but they're also going to be creating excess damage inside their midbrain uh, where this is occurring. And we protect against this with methylation nutrients and monoamine oxidase inhibitors such as St. John's wort. The research has further confirms this by saying basically that the dopamine induced damage that comes from everything that I've talked to you about today is prevented, prevented by antioxidants that we make and antioxidants that we take. This is why the diet, lifestyle, and getting on the right nutritional protocol can literally change your life 
and improve disease and dysfunction even in people with Parkinson's disease. So if you have any questions about this or any other subject relating to methylation, please get in touch with me. You can find my information at the website below. And I hope you have a wonderful and healthy rest of your day. Thank you very much.